guys, this RC Ranch Wagyu brisket out of Texas is some kind of good. Let me show you how I cook it. All right, the first thing we want to do to get our gateway drum fired up, I'm going to be using a mix of two charcoals today. I'm going to get a, coal, a good bed of lump charcoal down. It's going to create a good coal bed in my drum basket, and I'm going to top it off with some super size. Now, you can use whatever charcoal you like. I'm trying to use up both these bags, and that's why I'm doing this, honestly. Top that off right there with them big briquettes. Let's get some tumbleweeds in it and fire it up. Now that we've got our charcoal in our basket, I'm gonna take three tumbleweeds, cram down in some charcoal, and get it lit. We're trying to get our drum up to around 300 degrees, let it settle in, and we're gonna get this RC Ranch brisket on the grill. All right, now that we got our fire lit, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple pecan chunks in that'll catch later, kinda throw them around. Now, I've got another rack here out of my Weber. I'm gonna take and put in here down on this next level. Now, I'm gonna set that rack in there like that. And the reason I'm doing that, before I put my brisket on, I'm gonna put another pan under here to kind of protect that brisket on the bottom side. And we're gonna keep rotating that rack and let it cook on this drum. We'll cook it over the fire, not on the fire. Kind of a two zone in this drum here. Go ahead and stick this rack on. I'm gonna get my lid on, let it come up to temp the right way, get this brisket injected, seasoned, and get ready to go on. Now that we've got our drum fired up for our RC Ranch Wagyu brisket, I'm gonna take, and this is totally optional, you don't have to inject your meat, you can, you don't have to, it's completely up to you. You do what you like. You can skip this part and go straight to season if that's what you want. I'm putting in a little bit of practice. I'm tweaking my flavor profile just a smidge because I'm getting ready to go to a contest. So this is kind of a semi-practice for me while I cook here at home for a video. So I've got 16 ounces of just regular water, bottled water, and I'm gonna take a quarter cup of my beef injection and put in. Now, let's move this over to the side. Get my top on here, get this shaking up. We're gonna get this brisket injected. Now this brisket started out at about 14 pounds. I'm gonna say I probably trimmed two and a half pounds of meat off of it. It's somewhere probably around, I don't know, 11 pounds maybe uh, is what I'm guessing. But you can see it's trimmed up nice and uniform like we need it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. My grain is running with me here. I'm gonna go ahead and get some injection. Yep, and get that top off, touching that brisket. I'm gonna start by doing just a simple checkerboard pattern across the brisket. Whoop, did you see that? I'm bad about using my hand to kind of go over this right here because as you go in this brisket and going down the grain like I'm doing, you're subject to squirt some out. And so we may not get all 16 ounces of this in here. May only get about 10 or 12, and that's okay. We're just imparting a little bit of a richer, beefier flavor, and also gonna guarantee with some of the phosphates in here, we're gonna guarantee we have a lot of moisture. Now I'm not gonna go all the way to the end there. I'm gonna turn this around and face it the other way. This is a beautiful brisket. I can't wait to see how it finishes it out. All right, I'm gonna call that a day right there. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is grab a napkin, kind of wipe up where some of this injection squirted out at, and I'm gonna kind of pat the top and bottom of my brisket off and get it ready to get seasoned. I'm not gonna use a binder today because it's already kind of moist from the injection, so there's really no need in it. All right, now that we've got our brisket fully injected, I'm going to start off with a good base layer of garlic jalapeno rub. Now you can use whatever salt, pepper, garlic you like. 
That's completely up to you. Kind of go around the edges here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and I'm gonna layer it just like this. All right, once we get a good coat of garlic jalapeno on that, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of my competition rub. Now I'm just doing this for a little bit of the color, a little bit of savory note. Now, while I've got that already turned over, I'm gonna come back with my beef rub. So my beef rub is heavy salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion powder. A little bit of paprika, a little bit of chili powder. It's a good rustic beef rub. All right, once we get the back down there, we're gonna flip it over. Now, let's find that competition rub. Kind of one all around the edges. I'm gonna go up high here, get a good base coat down. Now, once we get that all padded in, Y'all know I'm gonna come back with that beef rub. I think I'm gonna call that a day. That right there is a beautiful, beautiful brisket. I take that back. I'm gonna do a little bit right here. That fat. Now we've got that brisket kind of shaped up. Look at that, swole up. Oh man, I know that thing's gonna be good. I can't wait to get it on our drum here. Our drum is still coming up to temp. I'm gonna check on it and let this brisket hang out about another 30 minutes while our drum comes up to temp and settles in around that 275, 300 mark. We're gonna get it on and get to cooking. All right, our drum is up to about 275 degrees now. I'm gonna try to get it stable at about 300. But before I do, I've gotta get my other rack in and I've got a pan here, a little half pan, and I've got about three cups of water in it, maybe four, not much. I'm gonna get my lid off here. And I'm gonna kinda go right, right over that fire almost a little bit with that little bit of water pan. Now, I got my rack in here. Now look at this beautiful brisket. It's probably 11 and a half, 12 pounds like I said. Going fat side down, I'm gonna get it on that rack, get it kind of positioned around there. It's time to get this drum lid shut, get it adjusted to about 300, to let this brisket roll. We'll be back to checking in about 45 minutes. I'm gonna be getting it on and off of the fire, on and off, steady rotating. All right, we are one hour in on our brisket. We are running about 285 degrees on our drum here. Oh. Look at that brisket. Now I'm gonna check my bottom side. Oh yeah, now I'm gonna take and turn it over this water pan, kinda get it off the fire. Let it go over here. Right over that water pan. I'm gonna get the lid back on this thing and let it go for another hour. Well, probably need to turn that around. For another hour, I'm gonna let that go and we'll come back and check it again. The bottom was looking good. It wouldn't burn up or anything like that. Starting to develop a crust. You can see how wet it was on top. For only an hour in, y'all should smell this. It smells incredible. We'll be back in another hour. All right, we're two hours in on our brisket. Let's get in here. Oh, look at that. That brisket is starting to look so good. I'm gonna turn this brisket around. You can kind of see here how it's starting to develop some bark on that side. I'm, the fire's coming from over here up. Now we're temping about 130. So I know we're fine. I'm gonna get the lid on and I'm gonna let this brisket go and keep developing some bark. I'm gonna give it another hour in the drum here and we'll come back and take a look at it. All right, it's been three hours and 40 minutes into this. I got busy and Kind of forgot, but our brisket is fine. You can take a look at it here. We've rotated about every 30 to 45 minutes. And before I get in here and pick this up, I'm gonna show y'all. We're at one, it says 175, 176. You know, 
something like that. We're in the 170 range. I'm gonna go ahead and get this brisket up. Look at the back of that brisket. Oh yeah, that looks good. So let's get it over here to our butcher paper and get ready to wrap it up. As you can see, I got my brisket over here on my butcher paper. So I've took my butcher paper here, sprayed a little bit of water on it, spread it out here. We've got it. Now I'm gonna take and push this brisket forward just a little bit. Well, just a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna go over this brisket. I'm gonna tuck this under and get this peeled back here. Kind of pull that real nice and tight into that, right? Now, we're gonna take and ease this back. Fold it that way. Fold it over this way. Now we're gonna take and do a good old flip. And then one more. Now that little bit of extra there, I'm just gonna tuck right back under here. Now, we're gonna get this back over on our drum. I'm gonna gently stick a chef's alarm through here. I'm gonna set the probe to about 205 degrees and I'm gonna let it go. We'll be right back. All right, our drum's still running about 285 degrees. I'm gonna take and kind of get this right here in the center. I'm gonna take my chef's alarm and I know this is a flat over here. I know how thick it is. So I'm just gonna go in just like that with that pro. Get that drum lid shut and I'm gonna let this thing go. Now our brisket says this reading still 175, 176 degrees. I'm gonna let it go and we're gonna let this brisket rest a while after it gets done. So I'll be back once that alarm starts going off. All right, as you can see, we're getting that beep now. We're hitting 204 degrees. Our brisket has been on, let's cut this beeper off, five and a half hours. Our Thermal Work Chef's Alarm kept us at a perfect temp. I'm gonna go ahead and get this lid off now. Now this brisket would have probably cooked in four and a half if I wouldn't have put that water pan in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this brisket off. I'm gonna leave my probe in it here I'm gonna set it in my Yeti cooler. All right, we're gonna let this rest. We'll be back in about four hours to slice it and cut it. All right, everybody, it's been about four and a half hours. We've let our brisket rest in our Yeti cooler here. It's cooled down to about 138 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this cooler here. Get my, get my probe out. That brisket is good and rested. I can still feel some heat off of it. That moisture and that condensation. Oh, would you look at that pretty thing there? Oh, let's get it over here to the cutting board, get this thing open and see what we got in here. All right, now some moment of truth. Lord have mercy. Would you look at that? Let me get it out of this bowl here. A little nasty. Y'all know we're gonna pour a little bit of that, that juice on top of this thing. This is gonna be a good one, guys. Has some good jiggle in there. Oh yeah. Let's get in here and slice this thing. I'd say that looks pretty darn good. All right, now, I'm not one for big for, for uh, steady pushing down on it and pumping all the juices out of it. I'm going in here for a, for a piece of this fatty end. That glides like some butter there. Oh yeah. Had a little bit of snug on that point there. Maybe I should have let it rest a little longer, but I can't take it no longer. the flavor. Wow. That flavor is really, really good. I mean, the smoke that it picked up in that pecan wood 
that lump charcoal mixture with the bigger briquette royal oak, that is a killer combination. I, I love the grill flavor that you get off the drum. That is just absolutely incredible. Mm. I'm gonna slice up a few slices here and I'm saving this brisket actually. I'm gonna vacuum seal it and later on I'm gonna make some good chili out of it. Oh, you got that good old flop test and good old flapper as we would say. Oh, that, um, that flat is on point too. I'm really picking up the savory note from the competition rub that brings in there on top of the, the peppery beef note of that beef rub. I'm getting a little bit of spice from the garlic jalapeno on the back end. You know, you can always mix your own spices at home and I, I definitely recommend that. That's how I got started in this business. There's nothing wrong with it. If you wanna save some time, grab a, a bottle off a shelf of mine and there's plenty of others out there that does just as good a job. I'm telling you guys, these briskets off this drum, that's a really unique flavor. I can't wait to incorporate this into some chili and get all that good smoke flavor wrapped into it. I know that's gonna be good too. I'm, a, I'm gonna get a few more slices of this brisket here to snack on tonight before I vacuum seal it though. So just to recap, before we're completely done, we took an RC Ranch brisket out of Texas, trimmed it down, kind of rounded it around. I'm gonna say it weighed somewhere close to 12 pounds and then we took it, got it on our gateway drum, kind of washed it every 45 minutes, kind of slid it over the water, off the water, back and forth. You don't have to use that water pan, it's completely up to you. You know, we wrapped in butcher paper, finished it off. I would recommend after that point right there, I'm not gonna say that it's too tight, but I would probably carry it on up another two or three degrees and I'm just being a little bit, you know, that's just me being picky, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, but I would carry it up a few more degrees just because we were cooking, you know, a little bit hotter with that direct heat today instead of being on like a pellet grill or a traditional offset. So I hope you like what we're doing on our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow along with your friends. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, and of course, YouTube. I'll see you next week with another video.